Welcome to the Brick and Butter Zone. I am your host, Case Erickson, here to talk to restaurateurs who reveal their secret recipes for success. You will be encouraged, equipped, and inspired to take your business to the next level. It's like butter, baby. Butter! So buckle up and get in the zone. All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, friend. I'm here with the infamous John Brotherton of Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue out in Pflugerville, Texas. Mr. J, how are you today? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, good, I want to preface it, we're in the back room, we've got some, we've got a lot of activity, we've got some background music. Uh, we're put we're we're immersing the listener into the Brotherton experience as much as possible right now. So I appreciate you making time. Absolutely. For us. So part of the the essence of the brick and butter zone is to encourage, equip, and inspire the foodpreneur, and to get them into that zone of genius of feeling like they're in the flow and they're in a space of of service as well as inspiration. So. Are you really ready to get into the zone? Yeah, let's do it, man. All right, brother. Um, so first, tell me, I want to um, you know, just understand, really, because I've been following you on Facebook from like food truck-ish, trailer-ish, mm-hmm. uh, caterer days, what you did before that, like what you were doing before your food service days, and then how you went from the trailer or caterer to this opportunity here in um, in Pflugerville. Yeah, right on. So that's a that's a long story. So <laughs> that's what we're here for. You cut me off if you need to, but um, that you, you said ish several times. And, yeah. And really, it was a whole lot of ish in the beginning stages of doing the food trailer. You know, because we, we treated it more like it was a hobby, you know, than it was a full time because we had full time jobs. So. Um, 2010, uh, somewhere around there, um, you know, we were talking about doing, you know, doing barbecue retail, wanting to open up a spot, kind of do something like a Stubbs barbecue, and that mm-hmm. was kind of a far-fetched dream, but, you know, to start, we needed it to start a trailer. Um, I've been in office supplies, so laser printer supplies, toner okay. cartridges, inkjet cartridges, Totally uh, sounds printer like service. Totally yeah, sounds yeah. like barbecue. So I did that from uh, December 5th of 93 all the way up until 2014, I believe, 2015. Yeah. So I think it was 2015. Um, so the whole time that I played around, dabbled it with a trailer and pop-ups and stuff like that, um, I was working a full-time job. Yeah. Um, we started getting really busy. And uh, it was a bit too much. Yeah. So, um, you know, my partner and I, had to, I told him, look, I, I can't do both of these. So, yeah. And we never, I didn't ever have the enough financial backing to just do barbecue full time, which is what I wanted to do. Um, so I took a little break from it. An opportunity came up in Round Rock um, to go into a brick and mortar with someone else that had a food trailer. So I did that for a while. Didn't work out. I got out of that. Uh, the business ended up failing um, and I just went back to the corporate world um, still did barbecue on the side um, so 2015 I was started collecting student loans and um, I think it was kind of something to, that would push me to because that's not a pleasant I, w- I would rather like I grew up working on hay fields and rice fields yeah. and doing real manual labor um, and I feel like I, I would have rather done that than collect student loans. It's a terrible. I, I don't know. I just I don't want yeah, to dog yeah, on anybody yeah, yeah. that collects student loans. He has several friends. Just not a fit. Not I a do fit. It, it not wasn't for me. Right? Got it. So uh, it did help me out though, um, in a sense of like going after, because you're forced to make calls. You're forced to make cold yeah. calls. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. So that really helped uh, help me open up a, a door that that wasn't there before um, of going out, uh-huh. getting business. So it made me more of a hunter. Okay, you know. Like so it. so something good did come from that. You yeah. Know? And, and plus, it just forced me to um, to really build my business on the side. So um, you know, a good opportunity came up. Um, there's a, a group on Facebook here in Pflugerville. It's called Pflugerville Foodies. Uh, it's a very active foodies group. Um, someone had asked about a brisket, and, uh, you know, I mentioned to them that, you know, I could cook brisket for them. So I cooked a brisket for them, and, you know, it just kind of snowballed. Um, you know, they posted it back into the group, you know, how good everything was, and, 
you know, next thing I know, I got other people messaging me. Um, and, you know, fast forward, you know, a couple months and I'm working Saturday and Sundays to cook briskets for people yeah. while I work full time job. Um, which was, it was neat because I'd really kind of almost thrown in the towel, you know, and decided I was just going to go stay corporate, you know. I, yeah. went, um, I enrolled back in school to finish my education um, through, okay. a, through a, um, Sam Houston State University online. Um, pretty much, yeah, I, I kind of threw in the towel and just kind of said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to okay. do corporate, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad that didn't work out. <laughs> Pflugerville Fl- Fl- foodies were like, no, sir, yeah, this is yeah. not your plan. Exactly. <laughs> so, other plans for you. <laughs> so really that group, man, they forced me to do what I really, really wanted oh, to do, awesome. what I was meant to do, okay. you know. Um, so, so that, you know, it was going great. It was going so great um, that I was having to call in sometimes in order to, uh, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. My, my work done for barbecue, right. right, to go shop and this and that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just kept building on it until I was forced to, to make that decision, stay with full-time work or do full-time barbecue. And I had enough business built up to cover, you know, bills and things like that. And I was confident enough. My wife wasn't so much confident, but she's good <laughs> she's now. She's like, I love you and all, but really? Yeah. Really? She's good yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but her having, you know, being a teacher and having a steady income, yeah. um, if, if we didn't have that... I, I probably would still be, you know, working that job because yeah. there was just enough comfort level there to, 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 to take off, you know, and, and uh, timing was just so good. Um, where, where I'm at right now, you know, Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue, um, it used to be Black Iron Eats. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was doing this um, selling out of my garage and stuff, you know, people around town were hearing about it, restaurants were hearing about it, and I talked to the owner of Black Iron Eats, who's now my partner, Kelly Gary, um, about supplying his restaurant with some brisket. And mm-hmm. so, you know, Marvin, our executive chef, took that brisket and he made a, um, a French a French dip out of it. And we did, a, you know, some other sandwiches too, but every time that we, you know, we had put on social media that they had sandwiches with my brisket, their sales would just spike, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, we knew there was something there. Yeah. Um, and Kelly and I had talked about partnering up on a, uh, on a barbecue joint. And we were actually looking at doing a, a barbecue joint separate from the Black Iron Eats restaurant. And the more that we talked about it, the more it just made sense for us to partner up and make both of the businesses one. So that's kind of how those, the sandwiches with the, you know, the barbecue influence, that's kind of how those sandwiches came about because they were just putting out, you know, basic deli type sandwiches before and yeah not basic I mean they had some really good stuff their food was phenomenal so that's, that's why I came here and ate all the time yeah, I ate yeah. my way through their menu you know yeah. but, um, but you know in the early stages we would get together you know several times a week and you know we had a whiteboard and we're writing down ideas and, okay you know and all of a sudden our menu morphed into a you know sandwich after sandwich with you know barbecue so we're yeah. taking like a a Philly cheesesteak, but it's, you know, a brisket, you know, um, Reuben, which is something that we, you know, it's a pastrami that we brine in house and smoke just like we smoke a brisket, okay, you know, yeah. brisket grilled cheese. So all these different sandwiches, but we're putting in a, a barbecue aspect. Yeah, too. yeah. So, um, so that's kind of the short version, I think, of so how, how everything did, came to be here. Yeah, how did you transition from what you were doing with Black Iron Eats too, like you're full on. Yeah, so I, you know, I skipped to, um, when I, when I did decide to leave, um, the, re- the, um, you know, the student loan collections, um, I, I still had a trailer from the early days, right. with the Hall of Flame barbecue trailer, and, um, I left the branding on there and everything. I was right. still taking the Hall of Flame barbecue trailer that. out yeah. and, uh, and doing pop-ups. So I do pop-ups once a month and then sell briskets people would come to my house and you know several days a week and yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, get in line at my garage my you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it started out that way and then like everybody in Pflugerville is coming into my house I'm like I'm just yeah, gonna meet gotta, them yeah. in the garage you yeah, know yeah, yeah. you gotta have to keep that you know yeah. separate space you uh-huh. know um so yeah so I did that I did a lot of catering weddings and stuff like that 
Um, but I did pop-ups um, once a month out of the food trailer. And the very first one that I did, you know, I'd already, I'd been building this following since, you know, 2010. So fast forward, you know, we're in 2016. So mm-hmm. I, even doing it on the side, you know, I still build a little bit of a following at a time. But then, you know, with the, the Fleurville Foodies, I mean, they, they came out in full force. The very first pop-up, I've got, you know, I look out and there's probably close to 300 people in line. Wow. It was, it was like, you know, like a, like Franklin barbecues. It was crazy. You know, I'm doing it once a month. He's doing it every day. But, right, right. So it was really cool, you know, and then everybody was like, you know, dubbed the, the Franklin of Pflugerville or whatever. Okay. All right. It was crazy. Um, you know, everybody was tweeting the news stations. And so the very next day, um, you know, I had a, a news station at my house and, and it just it just yeah, blew up that. from there. I, you know? that. I remember seeing that. It was really crazy. Um, the day, like within 24 hours of that being on the news, I had 500 new Facebook likes mm, <laughs> on our yeah. business page. Yeah. Oh, you know, less than 24 hours. So, um, so that was neat. And um, people that were holding off to book caterings, you know, things like that. They were like, yeah, I'm, I'm booking now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that's awesome. And it's just been, ever since then, it, it's just been, you know, full speed ahead. Mm-hmm. Just relentless. So, so did you take uh, did, did you take over Black Iron Eats, or how did that? Yeah, so in a sense, so um, so my partner Kelly, he, um, he's got other businesses that he's involved uh-huh. in. You know, he wanted to have a restaurant, um, but didn't really have the time yeah. to, to be involved in the restaurant. So... Um, the you know what I wanted, what he wanted, you know, out of the whole partnership, it, it was just perfect. Like yeah. it couldn't have been any more perfect. You know, he uh, he comes in, um, he'll bring bring clients in. He's always around. You know, if I need him help or anything, he's here. Uh, all this build out on this in this dining area, him and a buddy of his, and you know some of their workers built out this whole thing. Yeah, he's a. You know, I was a master electrician in a former life, so, oh, okay. you know, That's stuff, stuff breaks down around here that I can't fix or whatever, you know, I call on him and he's here to fix it. Yeah. Um, but he's involved in other businesses, um, so his time here is minimal, so pretty much, I, you know, I run all the, I run the restaurant, and uh, it works good for us. Like I said, he, oh, wanted okay. to, he wanted to have a restaurant, so but he, he didn't want to run with, it. He was down with more rebranding it, because you were going to be... Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, I mean... Okay. Um, it just it made sense, you know. Yeah. It made it made good sense, and um, it couldn't have been a more perfect situation for both of us. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. So I wanted to touch on too, um, you know, something that I see you posting on uh, a Facebook is you know celebration, celebrating another year of sobriety. Yeah, and it's very intriguing for me and in, in my restaurant background because it's very easy, and, and probably if anybody's listening and they're in the industry, it's very uh, we we like our substances and we like our our uh, coping mechanisms, I'll call right. it. And so, you know, I definitely was in that space, you know, beer 30 got earlier and earlier for me, you know, went from, you know, time to, to start counting the money and closing out to like, you know, half hour before, oh, it's almost time to like, and then it's like, you know, right when I get to work, it's like, right. you know, pouring myself a beer. So I can under, you know, my personal journey with uh, substance abuse has been, uh, you know, my own journey and I'm always intrigued at other people in the industry who, because I feel like there are very few, because I feel like um, it's just very prevalent. So I was curious how that tied into, you know, really two things, like how how that journey came to be where you decided, you know, I'm going to put down cigarettes, put down alcohol, and then how you do that on a daily basis, being around it so much. Not yeah. that, you know, it's, it's different strokes for different folks. I don't have it that, you know, one of my favorite things about AA is, and I'm not even really active in AA, but one of the active, the things I like about AA is like, to thine own self be true, you know, on the back of the, yeah. the coins. And so it, it is really, whatever your truth is your truth, and whatever works for you is whatever works for you. Uh, and whatever, you know, what works for me is to stay, you know, more sober and conscious, and I get, I'm more productive, and I'm more clear, you know, particularly as I age, I can't, I'm like, you know, it's just, uh, I can't metabolize yeah. it like I used to. <laughs> yeah. So, hangovers last a lot longer. Yeah, so <laughs> tell me a little bit about that journey, what brought yeah. you to the point of sobriety, and how you carry that on a daily basis, being in the industry that we're in. Yeah, it was kind of a combination of all that, really, um, you know, I've never in my life have I craved a drink, but um, once I got started, I couldn't turn it off. Oh, so okay. Um, so for me, quitting was real easy. 
Because okay. ever since I've stopped, I've never craved a drink. Okay. Um, it's weird, um, and I'll, I'll circle back around um, on that topic because the smell of liquor um, does things to my brain. Mm. <laughs> it triggers. Uh, it doesn't make me want to have it because of how far I've come. Right. Um, but it makes me salivate. Oh, yeah. It, um, and it's been how many years now? Uh, nine years. Okay. The, uh, May the 27th. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to May 27th of next year. So yeah, I can hit that sure. double digit, Decade. you know. Um, so I never, I never struggled with having to have one. So from, from the very first day that I decided I was going to quit, um, it was easy. Smoking cigarettes, different story. Okay. And I quit the same day, smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Wow. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know about you guys out there or you. Um, I think if you've ever smoked. Day. I think about it every um, day, smoking. Smoking and drinking go hand in hand. Right, yeah, totally. In fact, um, I wanted to quit smoking first, and I'm, everybody out there has tried and tried to quit smoking. You know, I, I'd quit multiple times, pick one. All it took was one drag, yeah. and um, right back at it again. And it seemed like when you come back around to it, the addiction's even stronger. Is what it felt like for me. So each time it got harder and harder to kick it. Um, so towards the end of that, um, you know, I had friends. And I don't know how they do it, but they only smoke when they drink. I wish I had that. Uh, but I didn't. But I tried it. Yeah. I said, I'm only going to smoke when I drink. Uh, okay. Well, then you drink <laughs> you every day yeah, you start to justify day. cigarettes. All right. That made it to where I knew that I needed to, to shut it off. Uh-huh. You know? I, I didn't go to AA or anything like that. I never had help with it. I just uh-huh. I just stopped doing it. But at the same time, I'm... I've got an addictive personality, so I'm always addicted to something. Right. Right now, it's fountain drink, fountain diet, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, but I do. I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing that I think of. Uh-huh. So even, you know, on a Sunday, I try to stay away from the restaurant. But I find myself coming up here or going to the store immediately after I wake up. Soda just face. to pour myself a fountain diet, Dr. Pepper. That's funny. And I end up getting stuck doing work here. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But I've always had an addiction to something, you know. Um, so when I stopped drinking and smoking, I picked up a healthier lifestyle, started going to the gym. Then I went to the gym. For the first 90 days, I went twice a day without missing a beat. Wow. So in 90 days, I went okay. 180 times to the gym. Wow. Uh, dieted, lost a, a lot of weight, you know. was just feeling really good. Yeah. So, so it made it real easy to... To not think about right. smoking or drinking, you know, mm. I just ch- it was just like a complete 180 in lifestyle, you know. <laughs> never did, uh, you know, I wasn't abusive. I never had a DWI, none of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. When I drank, you know, a lot most of the time it was at home. I've never driven while intoxicated or even with the buzz. So, okay. But but I, it was an addiction. It right. Was, it was alcoholism, but it was on a different level. Because I could not shut it off after I had that first one. Right. Um, I didn't really drink much beer. It was liquor. I love bourbon. Oh, okay. Um, vodka. Any anything hard liquor. Okay. I just that was, uh, that was your. It vice. took control, man. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do. I wasn't stupid. You know, I stayed in my garage and shot pool, but um, it makes you think about what you're doing with your life whenever your kid says. I'm, I'm dad, and he's slurring his words, and man, yeah. it's getting <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. You know, and so, I'm, I'm a father too. Yeah, so that it's really kind of resonates with me. So that really, uh, that was moving, you know. Yeah. And I said, man, I can't, can't keep doing that. Yeah. So, how old, are, you, how old are your kids? Quit. He's uh, 16. Oh, okay. So he was. So, he was so we're talking that's five, good. six years old when. Yeah. You know, when he's imitating his dad drunk, slurring his mm. words and stumbling around. And that's yeah. not cool, man. <laughs> Your kids are seeing that, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I have alcohol addiction on both sides of my family. My father was biological father, alcoholic. Mm. Maternal grandfather, alcoholic. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of that in the family. And uh, 
So I didn't want my kid to see that. Anymore, yeah. You know, because I know he's at some point he's going to drink and he's probably going to struggle with that same thing. I hope right. he doesn't, you know, but he's probably going to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to set the best example I could yeah. for my kid. And, yeah. So that made it easy to yeah. to quit, yeah. you know, and uh, and now um, it's just I know what happens if I drink. I know what happens if I yes, smoke. It's predictable. It's it starts over, and I'm yeah. I'm not ever gonna start back over at day one again. Yeah. So I'm never ever, and I can say that with 100 percent positive, like I'm not ever gonna put a drink to my mouth again. I'm not mm. ever gonna smoke a cigarette again. Mm. You know. Um, here at the restaurant, we do some we do some desserts and that has liquor in it. Um, the bottles are here. There's no uh, there's no urge for me to hit that bottle or anything. But okay. I love to smell it. And, <laughs> and yeah. like, but like I said, it it makes it really it, it just makes my body tingle mm-hmm. to when I smell liquor. It's there's a crazy something. I saw thing. some study about like the Olaf. I don't know how you pronounce it. The Olaf factory. Olaf factory glands. The, the yeah. glands. Like you can the same tr- pressure. It triggers the same pleasure sensors. Yeah. Just smelling. Yeah, you know exactly. And if we can get sometimes I do that with you know any particular food that I might be avoiding at the time, if I can like not make make myself sad that I'm not consuming it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I I will eat the desserts because I do love desserts and mm-hmm. have like um, you know like a bananas foster that has rum in it mm-hmm. or you know um, puddings. Um, you know, a good friend of ours, Regal's Barbecue in Houston, they do a bourbon banana pudding and that it's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it, I just, I know when I eat these desserts, how easy it would be for me to just become fully engulfed in alcoholism again, yeah. you know, it's, it's really strange. So I really avoid it, um, except for in desserts cause I'm a yeah. dessert freak. Yeah. So I say, if I can eat it, I'm good, but I, right. drinking it's a different right. story. Plus I mean, <laughs> nine times out of 10, most it's, all that's cooked. Yeah. The alcohol anyway. is cooked into it. Yeah. yeah. So you just get the, those flavors, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, I think that, I mean, how do you find that that effectiveness, I mean, do you find that it, it makes you more productive, more clear, oh, yeah. more like you get more stuff done? Like, how does that, and that kind of leads me into the next question of, you know, what's next for you and, and how you're growing your business and what you're doing next? Yeah, so I'm, I'm up at four in the morning. Um, in bed by I try to get into bed by nine just so okay. I can get some you know some decent sleep um, so there's really no time in my life for for anything like that yeah um, I have to have a clear head yeah you know I can't I'm not just here cooking you know I'm and for the most part I don't do a lot of the cooking here anyway um, anymore you know because I've hired people and and that's freed me up to do other things like focusing on the business aspect of it. You yeah. Know? And I, um, just, I have to have a, I want my mind, my head to be straight at all yeah. times, you know. Um, if I was drinking, I'd, I wouldn't want to do anything other than, you know, probably go shoot pool yeah. <laughs> or uh-huh. something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I enjoy having a, a clear head. And uh, it, it does. It makes me more productive. So from day one of stopping doing that, I mean, because I, I would go to work and then come home and just start drinking and shooting pool. Yeah. You know, and then do do that until I went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there's no way I could pull off, you know, what what I'm doing here. I'm just way too busy to to even think about, you know, drinking yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. Just keep a clear head. I'm. I like to be sober. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, I don't like to feel like crap. Because yeah. you know, those hangovers they, they lasted all day long and sometime into the next day. It's just a, yeah, it's not worth it. No, it's not worth it at all. Yeah, you know, life's life's too short to just to, to be hung over. Yeah. You know? And a lot of times, you know, when you're drinking or, or whatever your choice is, it's kind of to escape reality. Mm. But it's only for a short period of time man reality yeah. doesn't go away it doesn't go away it you're like oh altered. there you are that's it's right. altered for Damn you it. for a little while but yeah it's it's, yeah. it's 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 right back at some point you got to deal with those problems that are yeah. causing you to you know to want to escape it yeah so um so it's just that I was just mine take I found, like, that's what i was trying to avoid i was trying to avoid, and, and really it was interesting for me that i was kind of per- perpetuating the problem that i was trying right. to avoid like that i was trying to avoid you know my the, the status of my bank account 
and I was going out spending money on alcohol. I'm like, yeah. that doesn't it's, like yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 causing, I'm yeah. causing the thing exactly. that's making me want to run. Yeah. Like I'm digging my own hole, literally. Yep. And so, you know, and then on top of all that, you know, life's too short for a hangover and like really like I would waste a day at least. Right. So I'm wasting the time, the consumption time and then I'm wasting the recovery time because both yeah. all that time, even if it's just one night, a, one night a, a month even or twice, once a week or whatever it is, that's, you know, tw- 12 hours, whatever it is, you know, so that's like, what can you do over, you know, 12 to 20 to 30 hours in a month and then your, your whole life and so right. it really starts and I think particularly if you're a father as well you know that helps that helps me stay in tune and conscious and aware yeah. And, yeah. and all that for sure so yeah man I, I smell what you're stepping in yeah. for sure way too much that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, to reach out yeah. and, and get more of your story so what's next for you my friend yeah so um, you know as far as here we're, we're busting out the seams here um at our current location so we're we're looking for alternative spots um whether it's an existing building or you know buying some land and and uh building a standalone barbecue joint Mm. so that's uh that's one of our goals is to do that um here in pflugerville i'm not not leaving pflugerville this is this is where we're gonna be you know we've gotten such strong support from from the community here yeah Um, you know, I think that if we did leave, that they would all come hunt me yeah, down. Yeah, they would. They know where you live. <laughs> so, they do know where I live. Half of Pflugerville has been to my house to pick up a brisket for my garage. So, um, yeah. So, I want to keep it here in Pflugerville. I want to move it, you know, further east, further into Pflugerville, you know, closer to where all the new developments going on. Um, don't have anything solid plans on that right now. But once we do that, I'm going to start a uh, another... Um, Another operation here in the current building, I'm going to do like a burger joint or something like okay. that, or maybe a home style cooking or steaks or, you know, something like that, you know, something that the community doesn't have right now. Yeah. I'm to build that here. Um, but we are also in the process of opening up a, um, a location in, uh, in Round Rock on Main Street in the historic district, and that's oh, actually nice. um, di- almost directly across the street from... The original brick and mortar that I went into with a partner back in 2014. Oh, nice! So it's on the on the 100 block. We were that original um, location was 112 East Main, and where we're looking, where we're gonna put this up, it's 103 East Main. Okay. Um, neat little place. Um, you know, like I said, in the historic district, the building was built in 1876. Uh, so there's a lot of history in there. Um, interior is beautiful nice bar yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is it's funny um, you know luckily that temptation's not there because yeah. I mean it's a nice it's a huge bar um, full you know every kind of liquor you, that you can imagine okay you know? um, but we're um, it's the form, the location was fire in the hole which was at a pizza joint okay and um, they were actually building out that that restaurant in 2014 whenever we opened up the the barbecue joint on that same block those guys Mm, were building out so they've been in there for four years uh they just closed their doors and that business owner uh he owns the building so he'll be our landlord Uh, but there's a there's a nice pizza oven in there um there's a whole lot of pizza in downtown round rock so or just in round rock in general there's a lot of good pizza so i'm gonna stay away from pizza um we're doing it's going to be a barbecue joint, straight up barbecue. Um, but, you know, here at the, the restaurant now, we do sandwiches, and that's kind okay. of our niche is those, um, you know, those iconic sandwiches. So what we're going to do is kind of um, put a spin on that and do, like, flatbreads. That's kind mm. of our niche product oh, okay. there, so, right. but, like, with barbecue meats. Oh, okay. Um, so we're still putting the menu together. Okay. There'll be a lot of bar food with uh, with barbecue incorporated right. into it as well, um, and the place is—it's uh, called Liberty Barbecue. Is what it's going to be, um, and it comes from a couple of things. So one of the original buildings we were looking at was on Liberty Avenue in Round Rock. Um, one of the partners, who is uh, Trey Dodson, he was the owner, one of the owners of uh, Tortuga Flats in Round Rock. Okay. Um, and there was a kind of a Mexican coastal Mexico with a little flair type of menu. So there's a lot of 
diverse foods that you know between the two of us that we can do so mm-hmm. sky's kind of the limit um but he um he had called me and he said hey what do you think about calling the place liberty barbecue because we were looking at that spot on liberty yeah, yeah. avenue and i was i told him and i i like it because liberty is the city of liberty is where i grew up oh, so okay. um yeah from kinder before kindergarten all the way um through high school, you know, I graduated from Liberty High School, so it was it was perfect. Yeah. So it's kind of a, you know, we're going back to the to the main street on Round Rock, and we're turning it all the way back to the Liberty yeah. days. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's what's next. That's that exciting. that one's uh, that one's just right around the corner. We're probably looking at a September, early September opening. Okay. Um, and then relocating the the one here in Pflugerville is kind of just a dream right now. So yeah, yeah, I'm hoping yeah. to. Hoping to flip wherever, that over, you know. Wherever right? the doors open, they yeah, open. yeah, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, um, but land is so uh, it's hard to come by here. You got to spend yeah. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's going to cost a good bit. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, I think that you know, I appreciate what I appreciate your about your story is, you know, just that willingness and that commitment, you know, to to keep the doors open, even though there was some resistance. You know, with you being in the corporate thing, you were still doing it, right? Like, you didn't mm-hmm. necessarily ever say, no, you're done. You are like, oh, okay, I'll get you your brisket. You know, yeah, someone's knocking yeah. on your door. Right. Like, you never really quit, quit, quit. You yeah, know what I mean? No, like, I in couldn't. terms of, like, yeah. you know, even though, so, like, all the things that you've learned at that first Round Rock and the, um, what was it, Hall of Flame, right? Hall, Hall of Flame, Flame Barbecue was right? our Hall original Flame, trailer. It was just, like, you didn't let any of that shit get you down, yeah. you know, and you didn't let... You didn't let the, the, you know, your son impersonating a drunk version of you <laughs> make you more down. You know, yeah. you're like, you're going to make a change. Yeah. And I really appreciated that about your story. And, you know, for whoever's listening, that they're in that space. I know, you know, a lot of people, if they're in a, like, if, the, if, if you're in a space of, should I stop drinking? Should I cut? Then the answer is yeah. Like just yeah. the fact that you're having that conversation. You're asking yourself It's the sign. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the answer is most yes. people, most people, and that's what I learned yeah. is that like, that like my mom doesn't drink, my dad doesn't, like they just don't have this ongoing, like you said, it's an addictive conversation, I think. You know where you, where you're. Kind of, I was addicted to the conversation and trying to figure it out. Well, I'm going to drink on holidays, or I'm going to drink on Bubble Buzz birthday, or whatever, like all these rules and and way. Yeah. You know, so for you know to to cut back, you know, but for the most part, I think people can just they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to have a beer with my barbecue. I'm going to have a drink. Like mm-hmm. that's nor like that's. I can never that's do the that. Normal thing, yeah. and yeah, I couldn't that's, either. Yeah, so I don't do a, anything yeah. in moderation. Moderation is not yeah, the moderation. Like I could hard. do it's the thing was I could do moderation, but I would be sad about it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I was missing out. Yeah. Like it wasn't fair. Like yeah, <laughs> just like which it, it, like then it would be the mental obsession that was just as equally almost uh, investing as much energy right. into that. So I really you know uh, I respect your story. I'm inspired by. Your commitment to productivity and getting stuff done, and uh, looking forward, looking forward to much of much of the goodness in store, and uh, coming you. up to coming up to Liberty, yeah. Liberty Barbecue, Mount Round Rock. Yes, sir. Starting to talk like this. Yeah. All right, Mr. John Brotherson, thank you so yeah, much for uh, getting in the zone, and uh, may you stay in the zone, and uh, you Absolutely. have a good rest of the day. You too, man. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for listening in to this week's episode of the Brick and Butter Zone. If you haven't already, go on over to brickandbutter.com. Download your free mindset reset affirmations. And most importantly, feed your face, spread the love, and stay in the zone.